Rosanna Scotto. The real estate market in Manhattan is hotter than ever. Check out this view from the rooftop of the Surrey Hotel. Even mobile homes are hot, selling for a million dollars or more. One of the most spectacular, best kept secrets. Then, inside the Woolworth building. That's wild. Isn't that great? It's yeah. a secret in the lobby. Don't tell anybody. The tallest building in the world 100 years ago, getting a new lease on life today. And the New York Met known as Thor throws us a peek inside his home. Do you mind? Uh, yeah, go for it. I'm very nosy about this stuff. But first, the beachside retreat on the market for $150 million. And Howard Grant of Sotheby's is giving us an exclusive tour. It's unusual to have three properties that join each other. And the total property here is 14 acres. Of the 14 acres, 700 feet is oceanfront. You have unabound, beautiful land here on the beach. So even though this is the most expensive property in the Hamptons, these are all teardowns? Uh, yes. When you're at this price point of $150 million, the buyers who can afford this price point and want to have their own identity and build their dream home. So they're going to come here and build what they want to build, what they foresee it should be here. They don't want to spend $150 million and live in somebody else's house. Crazy. So what are some of the perks with this house? Well, we're standing on the golf green, which is right in the middle of a, of a beach dune, which you don't see anymore unless you live in Scotland. <laughs> uh, there are also two golf cottages. This is a guest house, as we call it the number two golf cottage. Oh, because it's yes. near the T. Putting green was built on a sand dune? On a sand dune. That's very unusual, right? It's very unusual. <laughs> That's what's nice about having these houses so high up. They're, they're well protected from any ocean surge. Wow. This tunnel connects what? These, that tunnel connects the two homes that when you walk up on top, they're separate. When you go through the tunnel, they're together. That makes it legal. This place feels like a resort. Well, it's not missing much. You have an Infinity Edge swimming pool here with a jacuzzi, a wonderful pool house with steam shower, bathroom, kitchenette. How big is the uh, pool house? It's about 1,500 square feet. Oh, you're kidding. That's all? Yep. So I see you have a barbecue, a pizza oven, a fireplace. Does everything work? Yes, it does. I mean, Harold, I don't want to come in here and have to tear this down, too. We'll have a trial period. OK, that's a good idea. It really is pretty the way they did it over here. Yeah, the stonework is incredible. And again, everything overlooks the bay here. Everywhere you look here is water. Right. You have the ocean on one side, the bay on the other. The views are spectacular. Another thing that makes this special, there's no public access here. So in order to get to the beach, you'd have to have someone to allow you to come in on their driveway. As you see here, it's August and there's nobody on the beach. So you have a wonderful situation here. So we're finally at the main house. Yep, this is the main residence. 12,000 square feet, three floors, indoor pool, and views of both the bay and the ocean. And I think we should just tear it down, Harold. I'm still trying to wrap my mind around it. This is a teardown? Yes. Eight bedrooms, 10 bathrooms. So what are some of the fun features in the main house? Well, the fun features we're going into, this is a disco room which even has Woo, let's dance, the disco Harold. lights with a bar. Awesome. And then if you continue through the disco room, we go to the basketball court. Here is the basketball court with an alleyway that leads us to the pool, just like Disney World. This is unbelievable. So you can actually see underwater over yep. here. By the way, this property is a fantasy. It is a fantasy. Welcome to Montauk, just steps away from the beach where the ordinary trailer park is anything but ordinary. Owning a trailer in Montauk is the new status symbol that comes with a big price tag. Just ask realtor Louise Phillips who gave up her Hamptons mansion for this tiny plot of land. Montauk Shores is a condominium that literally is over 20 acres and a thousand feet of oceanfront. It was originally a campground, but in 1976, the owner filed bankruptcy and 152 of the residents band together, bought it, 
and created a condominium. And it's one of the most spectacular, best kept secrets. I can't believe how close you are to the water. It's the best part of it. Every morning, Chris and I wake up before the kids wake up and we grab our cup of coffee and we walk to the beach and we watch the surfers. Can you show me around? Absolutely, I'll show you my slice of heaven. This is so chic. Thank you. I can't believe this. So tell me about this kitchen. The kitchen should always be the heart of the home. I strategically did all of the cushions and the stools with neoprene, which is what wetsuits are made from. Oh, that's amazing. Can I see the bedroom? Yeah, let's go look. This is yours? This is our bedroom. We would like to refer to it as our postage stand. It's cozy. The boys' room is very, very succinct. It's two beds that actually sleeps for, and these are actually one of the most brilliant ideas. They're IKEA trundle beds that we wrapped in fabric and just made them fun. So it's not that cheap. I mean, everybody <laughs> calls it a trailer park, but it's not that cheap. Tell me about this plot of land. How much did you spend for it? We paid, and it had a, it had a trailer on it, and we paid $567,000 in 2014. This area is sort of the antithesis of what you think of the Hamptons. It's really about being together. So to be able to give that to my children is a blessing. By the way, Louise's tiny plot of land has gone up in value from half a million to just about a million. Next, an historic building in Manhattan goes condo. You do feel like when you walk around here that you're stepping back in time. The Woolworth building then and now. And later, we get cozy with Met star Noah Syndergaard. Oh, all of us. Okay. <laughs> Oh my god, okay. Three's company! Okay. <laughs> when Living It Up returns. Do you know what once was the tallest building in the world 100 years ago? No, not that building. It's the Woolworth Building in Lower Manhattan. The iconic building will soon house 33 luxury condos ranging from a few million to over $110 million. Kenneth Horn, founder of Alchemy Properties, wanted to make sure these condos are treated like a rare art. While 29 stories below, the great-granddaughter of the architect, Helen Post Curry, offers tours of the ornate lobby. Helen, your great-grandfather was the architect of this building. And I have to say, they don't make them like they used to. No, they certainly don't. You couldn't build this building today even if you wanted to. This is uh, barrel vaulting construction, and the uh, decoration is Byzantine mosaic. The ceiling was installed in sections, so we didn't have somebody lying on their back installing little tiny pieces. This staircase is so grand. It certainly is. It was meant to be a grand entrance into the Irving National Bank. They were the anchor tenant in the building. One of the important things to know about the building is, of course, it was the tallest in the world. And it remained so for 17 years. It's 60 stories tall. Tell us a secret or two about the Woolworth building. The biggest secret is actually in plain sight. It's famous for having 12 Corbel characters. These occupy the spot at the top of where a column would be. I always like to start with this one that I think is the most important. That's Cass Gilbert with a model of the building, and they each hold something that gives a clue as to who they are. Across the way, who do you think we have over here? I have no idea. Well, that's Frank Woolworth. And what's he doing? Counting his nickels and dime. Oh. And your great-grandfather? Yeah, that one. That, that's your great-grandfather That's right. There. Yep. Did he really look like that? He did. That's wild. Isn't that great? Yeah. It's a secret in the lobby. Don't tell anybody. So this is the mezzanine. Yes. Do people get a chance to come up here? No, only on our tours. Now this mural here, it looks very religious. Exactly. It's the same format that you would find in a well-funded church or cathedral with a triptych. My favorite part up here are these little characters. 
I mean, they're just a riot. But they look mean, like this guy looks like... He looks very scared. Yeah. I mean, the details are incredible. Exactly, which is part of why I wanted to be sure to have you have a chance to see some of this, because it's just exquisite. It's you don't exquisite see work. these kind of details no. anymore. Absolutely not. How long did it take to do this? The whole building was built in three years. With these kind of hand-carved mosaic? Everything, marble. Of course, you know, it's steel construction. So they started with the basics and added and added and added until they ended up with this. Do you ever just sit right here? And no, you're never allowed to do that. <laughs> Bad idea. <laughs> How does someone with humble beginnings in Brooklyn wind up owning the Woolworth building? We really came down more as a curiosity. And the curiosity turned into us buying the building. And when we had the opportunity to do this, we really just jumped at it because of its pedigree, its location, its bones, and its history. The views are magnificent. It doesn't matter what window you look out of. When we built the units, the bulk of them, we have a two bedroom on one side and a three bedroom on another side. And we were determined to have every one of those units on these floors on 32 through 41, really have northern views, southern views, and eastern views. Tell me about the terracotta. On every different floor, there are surrounds, which really act as the beautiful motif of the building. Now here, We've got the multicolored terracotta and the, the fleur-de-lis and the gorgeous imagery. Higher up, the windows are a little bit different and the surrounds are a little bit different. So every single floor has a different application from the outside. You do feel like when you walk around here that you're stepping back in time. Right, and so the challenge for us was to design the units so that we didn't forget that. This is a beautiful, spacious, kitchen. I mean, you could do a lot of cooking in here. Everybody's nosy about the bathroom. Is that the truth? Everyone loves the bathrooms. Yeah. This is you know, stone galore. So this closet is like every woman or every man's dream. I mean, it's so spacious. Let's see what you have in here. Oh, it's empty. It's okay, empty. Perfect. Yeah. I'm moving in, Ken. <laughs> Coming up, at home with Noah Syndergaard. Your wind up. Uh huh. It's not as fancy as mine. Watch this. And broker secrets revealed. I open up the door, and what do I see? The owner in handcuffs against the bed. When living it up comes right back. He's a star on the New York Mets, but these days Noah Syndergaard is rehabbing his arm inside his luxury rental on West 42nd Street. Hmm, well, who could it be at this hour? Noah, I'm Rosie. <laughs> I'm ready to play ball, Noah. All right, come on in. The first thing I need to see is the refrigerator because I want to see what you consume. Okay. Is it real food or expired food? No, there's real food in here. Okay, there's let's see. There's not a whole lot in it, though. Okay, that's cool. Do you uh, mind? Yeah, go for it. I'm very nosy about this stuff. Let's see what we have for leftovers. Chicken. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yep. Chicken, brown rice. Healthy. Turkey bacon, probably. Healthy, because I want to make sure you're rehabbing right now that everything is good, you're eating healthy. Yep. Beautiful views. Yeah, great views. All right, you see forever here. This is your favorite room right here, right? This is where I like to be lazy. How do you feel about the Thor um, nickname? Uh, I like it, I think it's cool. All right, Noah, what goes on at this table? Do we do not dining whole, here? Not a whole lot of eating, to be honest. This is where you sign your cards? Yeah, this is where we make some money right here, signing cards. Do you ever have anybody else sign them for you? No, no, no. Okay, yeah. just checking. <laughs> Can't do that, that's, that's yeah. fraud right there. Yeah, that's fraud. That would be terrible. Right. People pay for a Noah Syndergaard autograph, that's exactly what they're gonna get. Right, okay, well, that's good. You're a man of your word. Yep. 
While you, while you sun, I'll be right back. Who am I? You're me. <laughs> Thor! Your wind up. Uh -huh. It's not as fancy as mine. Watch this. No, it's not. No. Like, you, this, you, you need to incorporate this in. When you come back. See, you're distracting the hitter as well. Right, exactly. You still haven't released and the ball like, yet. And then like, turn, and then throw. And then throw. Okay. Just I'll, I'll give it consider some, it. I'll give it some thought. All right. I mean, because you're just sitting here and signing. Yeah. yeah. Where's Alex? I, I want to meet him. She her. stepped out for a little bit. Did she really? Is she hiding? I don't want to be too forward with you now, but this is the bedroom. Mm -hmm. Can I take a look? Go for it. Okay. Oh, look who's here. Hello. Alex. Hi. I've been dying to meet you. Oh, my God. I'm welcome. Rosanna. Welcome to our bedroom. This yeah. is beautiful. This is where the magic happens. Yeah. This is where the magic happens. Yeah. What yeah. kind of magic happens here? We watch a lot of TV. <laughs> Yeah. It looks comfy. Oh, that's it nice. is really yeah. comfortable. Do you want to try it Can out? I? Yeah. Well, I want if the two of you. Just yeah, all of us. Uh, Come all on. of us. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. Three's company. Okay. <laughs> this is, this is happening. Oh, this is this so is comfortable. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. Do you feel at home? Uh, I do. Does it take you a long time to go to sleep? No. Oh. Yeah, mm -hmm. me either. We go to bed at like 10. You do? Yeah. What time do you wake up? Um, he wakes up really early. Alex, does he snore? No, he doesn't. Thank God. Noah, does she snore? <laughs> no. <laughs> she, does, she does not. She's an angel. Even when she gets up in the middle of the night, this mattress right here. Yeah. You can't even, can't feel, even it. feel it. <laughs> okay. All right, on that note. Thor! <laughs> yes, I feel it. <laughs> Just ahead, real estate confidential. One of the craziest experiences we had to deal with was last year at Fashion Week when the Jenners were staying in the 15 Leonard penthouse. Mariah is wearing a tube top and bandage mini skirt. These brokers tell all. Real estate is not always glamorous. In fact, if you ask some top brokers, they'll tell you they've had some odd encounters. This is Real Estate Confidential. I'm Dolly Lenz. And I'm Jenny Lenz. And we're with Dolly Lenz Real Estate. My most shocking experience was when I was showing an apartment in the Trump Tower, you know, where Donald lives, our president. So we're walking through the living room, I'm doing my thing. This is the living room, these are the views. Let's go to the kitchen. We walk to the master bedroom. I open up the door and what do I see? The owner in handcuffs against the bed. So, I quickly closed the door. I said, you know what? The room isn't really ready yet. Maybe we should come back later. And I walked them through the entire apartment without skipping a beat. But I have to tell you, I almost had a heart attack when I opened that door and I'm like, am I seeing this? Another really odd story was when we had Mariah Carey come in and she was going for a board approval and Dolly told her, you know, Mariah, dress, you know, as if you're going to a funeral. Of course, days later, the board meets Mariah and Mariah is wearing a tube top and bandage mini skirt with her whole middle exposed. And Dolly says to her, Mariah, like I told you to dress like you're going to a funeral. There's no way you're going to be accepted. And she said, this is how I dress to go to a funeral. <laughs> I'm Andrew Azoulay with Douglas Elliman. One of the craziest experiences we had to deal with was last year at Fashion Week when the Jenners were staying in the 15 Leonard penthouse. They got stuck in the elevator with Haley Baldwin. Ah, thank you! It was uh, quite entertaining. We also did the Airbnb deal with the Kardashians uh, during Kanye's tour. They stayed at the penthouse in 471 Washington. Uh, unfortunately, after uh, her horrible incident in Paris, she had come back there. Security was a little bit insane, and crowd control was no fun either. I'm Eleanor Strugo from Douglas Elliman Real Estate. I had a short-term rental listing for $35,000 a month that was occupied, and I got a last-minute request to show for a Bob Smith. Um, I warned the agent that I had no idea what the condition of the apartment would be, um, and she said she still wanted to show, so of course I ran over there. Um, and when I showed up, it was not Bob Smith, but it was actually Kevin Jonas, his wife, and Nick Jonas. So when we got to the apartment, there were literally mattresses all over the floor. 
Um, the garbage hadn't been taken out. There were clothes hanging from windows, but they were very cool about it. They were very appreciative of my time and thankful for access um, and politely declined. Here's a thought. Some people look for a beautiful place. Others just make their place beautiful. Thank you for spending time with us. Until the next time, I'm Rosanna Scotto.